Okay, next chapter is uh, demons. Now, throughout the, t throughout the uh, inconsistent, I'm talking about demons, but I'm not. Re I've not really realized I should be addressing this until I fin finally I got the idea I should. I'm saying inconsistent elements affect our psyche. Well, angels is just one type, and it's really like a larger than life celebrity thing, you know. This is this shows uh, the the connection between the real gods and religions, and this is like intuitive for us to connect them. Uh, but this is not the real prime channel by which the real gods affect us as consciousnesses. The real channel is what I call demonic influences, which is like the finger, the meta inconsistent metaphysical finger of the real gods in our consciousness. These are demons. They, they change uh, the filter of our consciousness, causing us to direct our attention to specific things. And uh, they are, we are oblivious to them. I call this demons because this is exactly what usually we refer to de demonic possession as. So I call them demons, but these are not <laughs> deities from hell. They are not deities at all. They are just like the finger of the real gods in our consciousness. Which uh, cause, us, cause our consciousness, cause our minds to change without causes, causative justification. Um, this is like completely against everything that I've been discussing in the Delta theory because I didn't understand it, I didn't know it. Our demonic influences are not an invention. The, oh, the name is a name. But the fact is, psychology cannot answer what we are. Psychology uses rationality and demons are inconsistent elements inconsistent effects over our psyche. So we cannot uh, analyze them using rationality or consistency or whatever, anything of the sort. Um, also, another idea that comes com that I understood throughout the text is the co connection between the deltas which I discussed in the previous book, and demons, and pain. Thing is, pain, sensations of pain, they cause the external world to become relevant to our internal world, which are two irrelevant worlds. They cause a relevancy, a metaphysical relevancy between them. This means that these are inconsistent elements, these are the fingers of the real gods in our psyche, these are, these are the deltas, these are our, what our wills and desires. And uh, it means that um, demons are, because we have wills, we are, because we want things, it means that we are under the influence of demons. Had we not been demonically influenced, we would not want to eat, drink, or whatever. We would, want, we would care for nothing. We would be like rocks, which do not do anything because nothing motivates them to do anything. Anyway, uh, demons come in two types, proactive and fixating. Proactive makes, make us do things which we wouldn't do otherwise. We wouldn't, wouldn't do according to rational thought and fixating make us like religions, like, uh, like let's say, make us not accept obvious um, understandings 
due to demonic influences. Now the sources for demons are uh, there may be several and they are confusing. The thing is, um, let's say when you talk about angels, when you talk about religions, we're talking about inhibitive demons, demons that come from society. Meaning, this is not really the finger of God or the real gods changing our beliefs. This is what demons do. They govern our faith. They govern our beliefs. This is not really in metaphysical inconsistencies in our lives, but rather the, uh, the, the collective effects of our society, which all of which is affected by some angel who has been affected by metaphysical inconsistency in one way or another. So these are inhibitive demons. And usually we don't, we can't even recognize they are demons or they are strange. We think this is society. Um, and usually inhibitive demons come in the form of fixating inhibitive demons, meaning demons which make us not understand what is obvious. And empirical sciences are in this category. <laughs> and then there are spontaneous demons. Spontaneous demons are actual in metaphysical inconsistencies in our mind, in the in the sensations with which, which we think. These are really like we cannot trace this. There are things that affect us as you as consciousnesses which we cannot explain, and this is uh, and psychology can do whatever it wants. Psychiatry, psychiatry can. D it's not materialistic. It's again. The real gods affect contingent dimensions, therefore, no materialistic cure could solve demonic effects. So, basically, both are off the mark. And usually, uh, again, demons are not that bad, but there can be, uh, if we, there can be high measure of demonic influences, when, in which case, uh, will our behavior will become too erratic to do anything uh, productive with our life or possession and this means that one type of demon is affecting us one type of irrational thought possesses us but usually we can exploit demons We can the demons can make can uh, they change our thoughts in a, in an unpredictable fashion and can bring us inspiration to do things which we wouldn't think of otherwise. So they are good, but when it comes with when they come with high measure and more more specifically high possession, then it's impossible to we cannot exploit them anymore. Or they become a source of harm. Now. Demonic possession is somewhat similar to uh, Delta bestiality, completeness bestiality, more, more like. And we might confuse it with insanity, but the problem is that once we understand that metaphysical inconsistency affect our psyche, we cannot longer discuss. Uh, we can no longer discuss insanity because insanity is a, is a term that is taken from psychiatry which does not understand or comprehend the existence of demons and therefore it does not understand our psyche just like Delta Fear did not understand our psyche to the full and so it may be similar to insanity and it may be alarming but insanity is simply invalid it's not a valid term, insanity. You can say demonically possessed, demonic, demonically influenced. But th this is not the same as, in, as what insanity means. And insanity means a deficit. And many of our pioneers were demonically influenced. And the fact you are demonically influenced does not mean you have to comply with your demons. But what it does mean is all our demonic influences, even though the real gods may, inf may cause them, even though we are not the ones 
who issue them, we are the ones to take responsibility for them. And this is something that really God want. And why you need to, to understand why you need to read. This entire idea about religions, about the really gods, about demons, about our lack of ability to control our lives, it makes causes an antagonism. And I was the problem is that this, before I wrote the second book, I never thought uh, about this thing that, and something made me write it, and uh, and I couldn't understand why. I mean, if, if okay, so the like some events that have changed my life forced me to write something which at the end I, under, I understood it was due to demonic influences for one but the other but on the other hand it didn't make sense because all my conclusions ended with the understanding that this is bad and we can do nothing about it so the next chapter rebellion it's just saying uh, all this under all this understanding they make us want to rebel against this disposition and, and what could be the point of it and then I see I saw a link something linking his history I, I said I'm not the only one I'm not the only one to understand the existence of to comprehend to see that metaphysical inconsistencies exist they become they became visible as of late with the in, with the dis discovery of physical randomness with the two world wars and what they mean about our morality with the change in our con current contemporary society that changes us to fa to be both objectively marginal but sub kings and queens of the subjective realm we think we are so important we can change the world by clicking like on Facebook and we have never been so insignificant in the entire human history and if you need proof just look who holds most of the resources of our on earth how many of them and are you one of them the answer is I'm pretty much sure no so everything is like directing into direction and the direction is what I concluded that we have evolved to uh, leave the angelic path but what is the new path and then I found the new path and actually this path was already is what was already here for a long time but we have not fully exploited it and now we will apparently now we will or maybe I don't know I'm not I won't be a prophet but I think it's already happening and that's what I call demon casting if we are if we have the, have the capability capability we can take the demon I already hinted this we can take our demonic influences and use them as inspiration to create something which is irrational in its geniuses and, act, and this is the ability to, dream, to demon cast to, ca to take a demon and cast it into a physical object which will have some kind of because there is no rational reason for the appearance of the demon the, the, our inspiration is, can leap forward in time in the sense of what we discover let's say uh, uh, let's say maybe I, Albert Einstein who what caused him to think about what he thought that uh, Isaac Newton um, Plato uh, Nietzsche whatever uh, as well as artists I mean as well we can exploit the lack of reason by which we understood some concepts to skip time and progress and I call this ability which I think is biological neurological 
I call this the dragon instinct. Why dragon? Very similar to how I selected uh, angels and, and demons. Dragon, I took etymolog etymological uh, sources from many places. And I call it this way because because um, it's cool <laughs> and because it, uh, it, uh, it shows many of the qualities of demon casting uh, and uh, maybe this ability this the dragon insect is actually the thing that differentiated us from uh, Apes, it's possible. I'm not. I don't know when it emerged, but what the new tendencies show is that we are going to focus on that ability in the future, or maybe we are already. That's what. Uh, that's what I concluded, and I am uh, again. Demon casting can be. This can be achieved also in art, and actually this gives an explanation why the, the, there's a very big uh, antagonism in art between people who are more interested in uh, technique and genres, and then there are those who don't care for it at all. And I understood that one of them, those who do not care for anything and just like try to make themselves feel better somehow these are demon casters those who are doing technique they are angel casters meaning they are doing they are passing a, an, an irrational message not not trying to alleviate demonic sufferings and putting them together is like really bad but it gives a very uh, totally com complete completely different uh, analysis of the art world and I won't go about um, about this in detail really this is like for me as an as a musician it's it's it was really um to really put things in context explain things but again uh, you should simply read it if you find this interesting it's about art the, uh, let's say if we're talking about art, uh, art, demon casting in art, it's really easy to uh, to uh, to give ourselves uh, some slack when making art, thinking we we're, we're doing something important. Now there are several rules. One is we have to actually address our demons, not avert the conversation to other stuff. Then we are not demon casting. We have to be sufficiently uh, have sufficient craftsmanship because if we do not by demon casting, we once we were demonically influenced, then we, we show we are geniuses. But if we get for art, we get respect without craftsmanship. What are we getting respect for exactly? If, if it's not the work of art, then it's not demon casting. Then we are not beating our demons, then we can connect the dots, but you should read. If you are making art, you should read this episode. It's important for your understanding of what you are doing. Maybe. Maybe it's not important you decide. Uniqueness, not so important, but if we are not doing, having again any relevance to our lives and we are just copying from someone else, we are not demon casting because the demons are personal. They, are, they affect our personal psyche. Um, variety. We cannot ever stop variety and quantity we cannot ever stop demon ca demon casting is as important to person performing it as a religion if we stop creating if you stop demon casting you are left at the mercy of your demons and I explain in this 
in the previous text, uh, previous chapter, I'm explaining what that means. Uh, so, again, if you find this interesting, just read. So then I um, I decided that uh, uh, I uh, not decided I analyzed this and uh, and I said that there is maybe there is a change coming but when I understood what I understood about dragons and uh, the dragon instinct is that it causes just alienation and distress and uh, there's nothing good about it so why would we change to that and if we are not going to change to that uh, and on the same co uh, like from a different perspective, we, we cannot accept religions anymore, no demon, no demonic influences, and we don't like the real God so much from what all we, we learn from this. So why, why do they make it visible? What do they want? And then I, what do the real gods want? What they are they trying to achieve? I mean, they, if they want to create, they want to create. If they want to inflict inconsistent change on reality, that's what they want. Why do, why do they work against their own motivation? Uh, of course, you can argue that they, are, they, are, they do not have a motivation, that they are just forces of nature. But then again, I took another possibility. And that's maybe we can assert. I'm always saying, like, we don't know if it's true or not. What, maybe, maybe we can prove that. Maybe we can affirm what I'm saying. Here. So, and that's what I call changing the odds. And that's to prove, affirm the explanation that the theory provided for how it uh, satisfies the completest criterion by constructing machines which utilize the dimension of consciousness and would uh, would uh, would have demonic influence and would demon cast. Now, this technology is based on 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 some aspects of uh, neural neuroscience combined with uh, contingent dimensional technologies, which I'm trying to explain. And this is very, this should be very interesting to someone who actually wants to take this and actually try to build like machines with the comp with uh, the potential to, to perform infinite amount of calculations in finite time. Something we cannot do, like start utilizing contingent dimension technologies and s allow us to progress to this next technological barrier. I try to put the first step for that but the truth is th and this is very if you want if, if you care for like ampli ampli applications of this text then this chapter changing the odds is the beginning is the first step toward applications of this these technologies and all and if you will be able to realize these technologies you will be the richest man on earth and you will be remembered for all time so this is interesting for anyone who's trying to find a challenge a worthy, a worthy challenge if it's possible but then I just I cannot do this this is there are so many problems so many things to do you need the entire scientific community to decide we are going to make uh, Delta to prove affirm Delta free and start building this will not happen I've been to the university tried to do something no fucking way this will not happen so I was again stuck in the same in the same um, problem why why bother why, why, why did I have to go through whatever I had to go through? Now, then I understood I had to explain what I had to go through to reach uh, the situation where I was asking the question. And actually, then I found the solution. Why this text exists? Why I wrote this? And it has a lot to do with my personal life and my music, which you 
which is a part of this chapter, the closure chapter. And it explains why uh, it exemplifies everything I've said in my life. And uh, it explains why, uh, yeah, this book will not change anything. But change will come. Or not. Maybe not. I don't know. So, now you have understood what I have been doing over the last year and a half. And I hope this was, I don't know, interesting. And I need a drink. <laughs>